cheap Nokia phones from Microsoft, Dell exposes your data, but the Nest Cam does not. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 457 for Wednesday, November 25th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Epson's new EcoTank printers. With Epson's line of SuperTank all-in-one printers, you can print thousands of documents without running out of ink. EcoTank is loaded and ready to print when you are. Visit epson.com slash ecotank to find out more. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving in the United States, and I want to take this opportunity to tell all of you how grateful I am to you for watching or listening or downloading or streaming or tweeting and emailing me your news tips and your constructive criticism. Thank you. Now let's get to the tech news. Several sources today started spreading the news that the Nest Cam was watching you even when you had it turned off. That is not necessarily true. Ars Technica says a team at ABI Research took apart the Nest home surveillance camera and found that it's always on even when it appears to be off. An LED on the front of the camera indicates whether the device is on or off, but a teardown of the Nest Cam, formerly called the Drop Cam, showed that while the camera's LED power did turn off when users enacted the power down command, the camera part of the device was still on and running, but it was not watching you, and it is not transmitting that video anywhere, so take off your tinfoil hats, my friends. Everything is going to be okay. Nest says that when the camera is turned off, it completely stops transmitting video to the cloud, meaning it no longer observes its surroundings. Nest Lab also uses 128-bit secure sockets layer SSL encryption and a 2048-bit RSA key that is different for each camera. And don't cancel that Pandora subscription yet, especially if you're an Adele fan. Last week, we told you that Adele would not be allowing any music services to stream her new album, 25. The Verge reports that a law for non-interactive services says Pandora and iHeartRadio can legally stream every song on Adele's album, no matter what her label tells them. Streaming music services like Pandora work like radio stations, so you'll have to wait to hear the particular songs that you want to hear, just like we did in the olden days when we were too cheap to buy music. Pandora doesn't make deals with labels, so labels can't say what's going to be on their service and what is not. Instead, Pandora pays a federally established fee, like a traditional radio broadcast, which legally allows them to stream any song with a U.S. copyright. Microsoft introduced the Nokia 230 and the Nokia 230 Dual SIM today. The $55 feature phone has a T9 keypad, a 23-hour talk time battery life, and is allegedly perfect for taking and sharing selfies day and night with the 2-megapixel front and back cameras. The phones will be on sale in December in India, Asia, and the Middle East. Other markets will follow in 2016. Apple has acquired Face Shift, a motion capture startup used to animate the faces of CGI characters in Star Wars. Now, we could read all kinds of crazy things into this purchase, or we could sit back and wait to see what happens. I will always choose the former, so here are my initial guesses based on extensive research and making some stuff up. One, Apple plans to use this technology along with facial recognition software to, to determine when I'm bored watching Apple TV, and it will find me something more interesting to watch. Two, Apple will plan to fully autonomize Apple Store staff, and they will use this face shift technology to create realistic looking and acting robot workers that will help us buy our next iPhone. Three, which is probably the most realistic one and that I did not make up, Apple wants to use this to get in on the virtual reality hype. The truth is these are mostly all wild guesses. All we know for sure is that they've bought this startup based in Zurich and that they, tell, they will tell us how they're going to use it only when they are good and ready. Coming up, Dell's hacker holes and Parrot's new drone. But first, this episode is brought to you by Epson. Epson's revolutionary EcoTank line of printers for home and office introduce a new age in printing. The new EcoTank ET4550 wireless all-in-one printer doesn't use ink cartridges. Instead, it features an innovative refillable ink tank. It comes with enough ink to print up to 8,500 pages. That's equivalent to about 50 ink cartridge sets. You're loaded and ready to print for up to two years. Powered by Epson's leading edge precision core technology, it delivers high speed, vivid colors and laser quality black text, plus auto two-sided printing, a 30 page auto document feeder and easy wireless printing from tablets and smartphones. All EcoTank printers deliver an unbeatable combination of convenience and value with ultra low cost replacement ink bottles. Now you have the freedom to print without running out of ink. Visit epson.com slash EcoTank today to transform the way your home office or work group prints. For the best combination of ease and value, turn to the new Epson EcoTank printers. That's epson.com slash EcoTank. 
and we thank Epson for their support. Yesterday, we told you that Dell had issued two updates to two different but similar security flaws that they had introduced to their own machines. Joining us to talk about this flaw is Nathan Olivares Giles, assistant news editor at The Wall Street Journal. Welcome, Nathan. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. So what PCs were affected by the flaw? Well, it was both laptops um, and, and desktop Dell machines. A lot of consumer machines, their XPS line uh, seemed to be the, the, the brunt of it. Um, I actually spoke to a few different security researchers that said that um, some enterprise machines uh, might have been affected as well, but not likely servers or anything like that. Um, so <clears throat> it, it was a pretty pretty broad swath of, uh, of recent Dells shipped since about August. So what could this whole allow a hacker to do? Well, basically what this, what this does is on every, every computer has what are called uh, certificate uh, authority, um, the CAs. And basically what Dell mistakenly did was ship a master key, the certificate, certificate authority that anyone could really easily get to. If you have this master key, you can basically use that CA uh, to verify any website as being safe uh, for anyone to browse on the web, even if it wasn't safe. So you could build a website that's posing as, say, Bank of America or Wells Fargo or Google or a number of really not safe things. And then you could use that to scrape someone's you know, pri private information, their financial information, um, their passwords, all sorts of things like this. So this wasn't really a mistake. It wasn't like a flaw in the software. They, they were doing this uh, to get to make it easier for them to fix com the computers. Um, was Were they just underestimating the ability of hackers to get in also, or were they underestimating the ability of security researchers to actually figure out that they'd left this here? You know what, I'm not entirely sure, but but basically, you know, the, this is a pretty routine process, and they, and they gave away the keys. So, you know, I think it probably amounted to something like, uh, you know, a, a lapse in judgment or maybe even laziness. It's kind of like if you make a house key um, and then you leave it under your, your front doormat, you know, it's like the most obvious place for someone to find it, and you just leave it there in perpetuity for whoever comes over. It's like a really stupid decision. So basically, Dell just blew it. Um, they weren't as safe as they should have been. I mean, honestly, they should have been smarter than this. Uh, it's a pretty routine thing, and for that reason, um, it shouldn't be such a glaring kind of silly thing to do uh, as to as to you know put the the master key for this certificate th authority in such a you know easy to find place. So it's kind of a glaring security issue, um, and there's really no excuse for it. Right. So this affects Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, the new browser, uh, and Windows 10, and also Chrome. Uh, so is there any browser that it hasn't been affected by this? Yeah, actually, um, Mozilla's Firefox is a safe browser uh, to use if you have one of those Dell machines uh, that's shipped since August. The reason being is that Chrome, Internet Explorer, Edge, they all rely on this operating system level uh, certificate authority to verify the safety of websites. Where Mozilla, they issue their own basically security credentials and they do it themselves. So, uh, it, you know, if you have an affected machine, that's the way to go. So I know they've uh, released an update and, and you can get it pretty easily. Um, but this happened on Monday and then it happened again on Tuesday. Um, you know, are people, are, are security experts suggesting people just use Firefox instead of Chrome or Internet Explorer just in case this happens again? Yeah, right now I think that's kind of the, 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 the bigger picture idea is until Dell really gets their stuff together, um, that's the safe way to go. Uh, no one's saying don't use Dell computers anymore. No one's saying don't use Chrome anymore. But the idea is that until you have this uh, update directly from Dell, uh, patching the security hole, stick with Firefox. Even then, afterwards, it might even be a good idea for you know when when things like this do pop up in the future. Um, and you know, unfortunately, uh, such security flaws do show up from time to time. Uh, last year, Lenovo had something that was similar called Superfish. It was actually some bloatware that they installed on all their machines to supposedly make it easier to shop online. Um, but this thing isn't necessarily unprecedented, unfortunately. Uh, but Firefox handles security in a different way, in a better way. And, you know, if this is really, really a concern of yours, then that's the way to go. Now, if, if Internet Explorer or Chrome are just your favorite browsers and you can't live without them, then, you know, hold off on them for now. And then once you do have that update installed on your computer, then you can go back to doing what you're doing. But um, either way, it's, it's kind of um, just a good reminder that what you're doing online, you know, can be seen. Um, and from time to time, 
uh, security holes that we can't even anticipate uh, do show up. Right. And to Dell's credit, they did apologize. I know Lenovo took a few weeks, I think, to apologize. First, they said this is no big deal. And, you know, they got in a little bit of trouble for that. So Dell apologized and then apologized again. So that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dell responded really well. I mean, they came out very quickly before my story was even up. Uh, you know, I was getting emails from Dell spokespeople saying we're looking into this. Um, and they really did kind of own up to it, which, you know, if you're going to make a boneheaded mistake uh, on this kind of level that affects millions of people all over the world, uh, at the very least, they are honest and they owned it very quickly. So, yeah, I will give them credit for that. I think you're right in that. So we had our dinner. Now we get to have dessert. It's Thanksgiving in the U.S. tomorrow. That means it's open season on shopping. Uh, so last week you reviewed one hot item, the newly sort of affordable Parrot Bebop 2 drone. Uh, what did you think? Oh, yeah, this thing is fantastic. I mean, you know, drones right now, they're they're kind of a cool emerging technology. They're getting a lot better really, really quickly. There's a big question over, you know, what would they be good for? Uh, on the consumer side, really, it's all about the camera. It's about shooting really cool aerial photos and videos. And the Bebop 2 is a really, really neat, easy-to-use drone. It's kind of mid-level. Mid it's, it's not super expensive, but it's not super cheap either. It's about 550 bucks. Um, the big deal here, though, with this new Bebop 2 is that it can remain up in the air for uh, as much as 25 minutes which for drones, for consumer level drones, is a really big deal. Most of them will die after like five to 10, maybe 15 minutes, which really isn't a lot of airtime. You know, you spend all this time putting this thing together, you get it for Christmas, you get it for, you know, yourself, you know, on that Black Friday sale or whatever. And then, you know, after 15 minutes, you gotta go back inside and charge. That kind of stinks, but the battery life is getting a lot better. The Bebop 2 has 25 minutes, and that's really kind of the best aspect of it. It's also very, very, very easy to control uh, as long as you have a smartphone, basically, you use that to steer it around. And it's not as dangerous either, right? The 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 that's plasticky, so it's not going to cut anyone's hair off when it hits you in the face or anything like it, that. Exactly, <laughs> it has it has it has uh, uh, plastic propellers. It's a quadcopter, so it has uh, little uh, plastic propellers. And you know, if for some reason, like say your finger or something gets in there, the the drone just stops and it won't like slice off your finger or anything like that. So it is you know relatively safe. Uh, the body itself is made of foam, uh, styrofoam, so it's very lightweight. Uh, that being said, you know, don't go, you know, flying it into your your aunt and uncle or your little sister or whatever. Um, it still is, you know, a flying piece of electronics. Uh, but yeah, it's it's only a couple pounds, and uh, as long as um, as long as you're not being reckless and irresponsible with it, it's about as safe as a consumer drone can be at this point. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for joining us. Nathan Olivares Giles is the assistant news editor at the Wall Street Journal. He's at Nate OG on Twitter. I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Thanks, you too. Take care. And finally, tonight, thanks to Tony Wang for letting me know that old and new Star Wars characters have now been added to the navigation app Waze. Not only can you change your turn by turn navigation voice to C3PO's voice, but you can also help. Hi, I'm oh, C3PO. Human type <laughs> you can also help C3PO locate R2D2, BB 8, stormtroopers, TIE fighters, and lightsabers to score extra Waze points on your travels. This is part of a whole galaxy full of Star Wars Easter eggs across Google tools. To get the road goodies for Waze, you have to join the Force Awakens team, which is free and which will allow your Wazer to display your Star Wars pride for all to see. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. We're off for the next few days, which gives you ample opportunity to catch up on all the episodes you missed and to let me know what guests you'd like to hear on this show. And you can tweet to me at Megan Maroney or email me at Megan at twit.tv. You can also subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again on Cyber Monday. Until then, be careful out there. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.